The Spin-Off Podcast Network. This is Kiwi is back for a brand new season with more inspiring kōrero from special guests including rugby player, father and role model TJ Peronara. My family bring me joy. Rugby brings me joy too, but it's not the same joy as my family brings me. And global dancer and choreographer Kirsten Dodgen. For some reason people think I'm very intimidating. Listen to the new season of This Is Kiwi, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network in collaboration with Kiwi Bank. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. Are you curious about how business can be better? I'm Simon Pound, and I host Business is Boring, a podcast where I caught it all with some of the most interesting people in entrepreneurship, commerce, and making things happen. Tune in to Business is Boring every Tuesday, brought to you by the Spin Off Podcast Network in partnership with Spark Business Lab. Okay, now this is the real pod. Oh my God. I meant this is like the real pod starting now, but it's also the real pod. Oh my god! Shit, Jeez, is that what we called it? That eight years later. <laughs> Kia ora koutou. Welcome to the real pod, the realest pod that ever did pod. We've got some big news. <laughs> Do we? <laughs> well, we've got the same news that we tried to. To break a couple of weeks ago, but we real potted it. Yeah, and, and we'll, this we'll is explain like more. the news is massive, and I just yeah. worry we haven't prepared enough. <laughs> well, I think that's the real pod way. Okay. Uh, my name is Jane Yee. I'm joined by Alex Casey, who is beaming in from Christchurch. Uh, we are Sans Duncan Grieve. He's currently on a global mission in search of his next amulet slash chain slash God knows what next a tiara. Who turkey knows? Teeth, turkey teeth. <laughs> Uh, we're also joined by Samuel in the studio. Hi, Samuel. Kia ora. Uh, and we have, I mean, we have, do, should we say? Oh. What? I mean, I feel See, like. this is what we should, should have had a conversation about. I know. I kind of feel like maybe we need to let people know that they're about to hear, you know? They're about to hear some news. The last. No, the last it's not one. the last. Oh, well, you've, you've hooked them now, for God's sake. <laughs> Should we just do it now, not take okay. it? Let's real news. Let's real news sting. Absolute schmozzle, honestly. Once again. Who do we think we are? Look, this is part of the reason why we're doing what we're about to do, which is we're going on a break. We're going on um, a classy mid-season hiatus. Like it is. It's like it's like yeah. It's it's uh, you know in the states with all their premium television series, they do a little weird mid-season break. That's all we're doing. It's Grey's um, Anatomy style. It's the writers' strike. It's everything. Yeah. And we uh, we're gonna be back. It's not a break up. It's a break. We promise you that. We can give you a, a promise ring, if you like, um, to show that we are true to you. We are not going anywhere for a long time, just a little short time, it's like just till August, just like, what, six, six weeks? A tiny, tiny break. And we are going away with a purpose. Can we say that? We are going away. We are entering kind of a metamorphosis stage. We are liquefying like a caterpillar for the next six weeks to return Bigger and better than we have ever been. Can we say yeah. that comfortably? Well, I think we can say that comfortably. And I think we can comfortably also say that it's going to be a fantastic change that's going to give you more of what you love. And it just it's just going to be better defined. Like when people say to you, oh, the real pod, oh, what's that about? You'll have an answer for them now that you could say in a sentence. But we'll uh, we'll give you more detail when the time comes. Don't freak out and um, just know that it's going to be great. And that also this was the news we tried to tell you a few weeks ago, but we real potted it in the most amazing way. <laughs> We actually recorded this whole thing where we were saying essentially what we're saying now. We're going on a break. We're going to be back. It's going to be bigger than better than ever. But then when we were about to leave the studio, Alex goes, don't we have a sponsor in the mix who's about to come on board? And we went, <laughs> oh, shit. 
Yes, yes, we did have a sponsor that was going to be coming on board for July, but they've now fell through, baby. Decided not to. The real pod <laughs> lives again in a way. <laughs> I wonder what deterred them. I can't yeah. imagine. I can't imagine. <laughs> so we quickly had to like re-record some drop-ins where we didn't. We, we talked about news, but we didn't give away what the news was. But now, now <laughs> the sponsor. Thankfully, set sail. nobody wants us. We just had to get that confirmed <laughs> that nobody wanted to come on board, and now we've had the we've had the go ahead there so yeah we're so off for a bit it's a hiatus um so this is going to be it's it's your last uh real pod just for the next wee while that's all and then we're back okay i think we've made that abundantly clear also you can watch us on youtube now Crazy. which is wild shocking i have How a lot of thoughts about, about um you don't see your face in that way you know, like, it's that weird reflection where it's not the mirror, it's different. And I've got a lot of problems with my eyebrows. They are all <laughs> over the shop. I think your eyebrows are lovely. One of them goes up, like, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, both of them should go up. Ooh. I mean, there we go. <laughs> I don't care. See, no, this is the magic. There's been... if, you're watching, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, the, what you'll see right now is Alex raising both her eyebrows at once. See? Sure. Wouldn't get that it's on. Worth it. Wouldn't get that on Love Island, would you? More about that later, though. Um, and, and you would have missed, well, just before, Jane, you stood up on the chair and showed me your skirt. But that's premium content. That's, that's premium <laughs> content. That's for our OnlyFans. And we didn't uh, We didn't actually, that's, I don't think we we got footage of that, did we, Samuel, did we? I don't think so. Okay, Never yeah, to be sorry. repeated. Impossible. Yeah. Uh, but that is the kind of thing that you might get to enjoy were you to watch us on the YouTube. And to be clear, the thing we're, we're launching in August is not an OnlyFans. <laughs> I can't tell if that would get people. No, it wouldn't get people excited, would it? Get people crying, <laughs> yeah. especially us. And we're already having trouble with sponsors, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, quick. Let's just get on. Let's get on. We've put too much pressure on ourselves. Let's just get on with the show as if it was a, a normal show. Tell me about Cirque Cristal. Oh. Oh my gosh. Well, I got to go to my first big glitzy premiere in Christchurch, Wolfbrook Arena, Friday night. Premiere of Cirque Cristal. So I was on tenterhooks, ready for all the southern celebrities. I was mm. like, where's Gary McCormick? Where's Brody Kane? You know, where are they all? Unfortunately, on at the exact same time was the Crusaders versus Blues semi-final, which I believe would have soaked up the majority of, like, the A-list. So I had um, Rude the Bugman. <laughs> <laughs> Was also at Cirque Crystal. I didn't even see him. I had to text Chris Henry, who I did see, beloved friend of the pod, number 25 in the 25 most influential PR people in the country. Um, also uh, on out, uh, the Out the Gate podcast. Out the Gate podcast. So it's, 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 he's a celebrity. He sort. is a celebrity, and it was so good to see him. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think the closest I got to a celebrity sighting was the fact I was seated in the JJ section. Okay, look... <laughs> Alex, Alex sent a text to the Fokker chat um, about being in the JJ section and I completely misinterpreted it because I saw, I didn't see the photo, I just saw the alert come up and it said, hashtag grateful to be seated in the scandal queenie section of Cirque on Ice and I screamed and was like, oh my god, JJ is in Christchurch with Alex, this is amazing, Alex is going to be able to see everything that happens, perhaps... Um, Perhaps the, the boyfriend's there as well. Uh, and then I opened up the messages and saw that it was uh, literally just the letters JJ. Uh, that, that's where your seat will's based uh, in the JJ take section. what I can get. I also like that you called it an alert. Like we have a civil defence <laughs> JJ Feeney alert. <laughs> we, should. We, we should. We should. We should be whipping that up. <laughs> that's text. But I, I actually think we need more Fiend content. Um, I really like, I really just, like I said last week, Huge soft spot, getting softer by the day. I do feel like there's a world where you and JJ end up having a show or something, you know, and I'm worried about it. I, I think that I'm not engaging because I'm threatened. <laughs> oh, it's like me not engaging with pole because I'm threatened by your pole dancing. Yeah, exactly. I'm scared that same. Alex is making better friends with her pole mates, but she tells me. I've assured her I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> she tells me they, they go in on their own, they get extremely vulnerable and limber with each other, and then they leave on their and own. Disperse, and never, and you never, don't change numbers? Never you don't have a Facebook group or anything? There is a Facebook group, but I've, I'm deactivated. I have put my business card on the wall. Wall. It hasn't really eventuated in anything, but we'll see. Sorry, bury the lead there. You're what now? <laughs> oh, I got business cards. <laughs> what, 
What in heaven's name for? It's 2023. Um, Is Instagram. it purely to enter enter drawers when you go to restaurants <laughs> and you put your business card in the in the giant vase? Well, it was part of my feeling of insecurity that I don't have Instagram now and I don't have like a lot of, you know, it's, it's harder to sort of get in touch. So I thought if I have a business card, I've deployed maybe three since I've moved, which I think is pretty good. One of them's on the notice board at Pole. Yeah, and one of them's at a big fishbowl to win a raffle, like you say. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the other one? That's what I want to know. I think I gave it to an Uber driver who <laughs> who sold um, carbon credits because I thought it would be a good story. Never heard from him. That's all right. <laughs> oh, amazing. What I've, we definitely need um, business card updates uh, as a regular feature. This is actually a good reminder for me to get out there and just distribute. I left them on some community, the supermarket um, thing amazed, the little notice board. Things. Have you put some context with them or is it just your, just Alex no. Casey and your phone number? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can be whatever you want me to be. <laughs> it's your senior writer, but even that's sort of vague, you know. <laughs> Hey, um, exciting news. I mean, Duncan's not here. That's not the exciting news. That's very sad news for us. We miss out on our weekly kind of mini mono. Uh, but he is watching The Traitors. He sent us a photo um, on the plane. Does that pause he? Sorry, excuse me. Is he a flash guy with Wi-Fi on the plane? He would be like that. He's probably hey, flying Kim Air. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but he's watching The Traitors, the UK version. That's what that was. I didn't recognise it. I haven't seen a moment you haven't yet. seen it. It's just, just, I really think you need to watch it ahead of the, the New Zealand launch, which is not too far away. Mm. Because, I don't know, context is key. Yes. I yes. think it's a, it's such a great show and I'm so excited. But anyway, so D- Duncan's being new to something. That's amazing. That's incredible. That's um, really Holiday Duncan, off, someone else altogether, isn't it? Uh, tell me about what now. Oh. Some, I went Some, to What Now. On, about 20 years le- after you should be going to a What Now. Yeah, well, the last time I went to What Now was, I think, 1998 at the Avalon Studios Lower Hut for Alana and Tanya's birthday. Beautiful, beautiful besties. Um, and I was invited by White Bat Media to go and check out what's going on now. It was one of their presenters, Erin's, not that one, last mm-hmm. day. Um, and so what was funny about it, she had been doing the show for five and a half years, so it was like this quite massive emotional episode. The entire audience was all friends and family apart from me, baby. Yes, <laughs> yes, just the way we like it. So, like, everyone was arriving and she was greeting everybody and, like, crying and hugging, and I was just like, cheerio, Hello. <laughs> It's like when you're you're the um, plus one at a wedding and the person that's invited to the wedding is also like quite distanced from the bride and groom yeah. themselves. So they might be like a, I don't know, a cousin that doesn't see them very much. <laughs> and then you do the um, the meet and greet at the end of the ceremony and you have to you have to be like, oh, give context and be like, that was wonderful and I'm never going to see you again. Thank you for the expensive meal I'm about to eat. All of that, plus I was taking notes, which, you know, Great. makes you look like a mega freak in any environment. Um, especially at a children's, especially at a, with a lot of children exactly. around. Exactly. Um, yeah. But I was just hastily sort of, you know, rustling my papers, as it were. And you should have given out your business card. I should have given out my business card. That would have made everything a lot clearer. Um, <laughs> but no, I had a great time. I didn't know what now is just down to an hour now, but it's still live and it's still powerfully messy. A lot of gunge, a lot of foam being sprayed everywhere, just a lot of towels down, you know, a lot of towels down. <laughs> Do you think the reduction down to an hour is a bit like the old death knell? Because I feel like that's what happened to Good Morning. Oh, don't Went down say to an that. hour. Don't say that. No, but no, surely not. It, it did just remind me of what an institution it is, and perhaps as well because it was Erin's last day, but there were lots of messages getting sent in from kids around the country, and I was like, oh, this is just wholesome. You know, it's good to know that the kids are still tuning into What Now. My kids don't even know What Now exists, I and they're right in the that. target demo. Yeah. Yeah, but they're busy with Bluey. You know, there's new Bluey. True. That's a huge, huge bloody deal. Yeah. God. Such a good show. Um, speaking of the, not that Erin, but the other Erin, mm. we were talking about Erin Simpson slash Frenich. Has she changed her name? No, she's still Erin Simpson, still, eh? Yeah, you have to be. It's on all the, anyway. it's on all the stationery. It's on all the, it's on all the business <laughs> cards. Um, so I follow Erin on, on Instagram and she's, uh, feeding her son, Harry, cutest child, so much rotisserie chicken, <laughs> like entire chickens. Like he, she just plops down a chicken in front of him and he just wow. rips that thing to shreds. How old is this young lad? 
I don't know, like not even like maybe one or around there-ish. Yeah, um, God, I haven't had a rotisserie chicken I know. in so long. Someone was talking about, I think maybe even based off your supermarket piece, but someone was talking about like in the corner. Oh, I didn't do the... Didn't do the uh, housekeeping. We've got a, a Facebook page called The Real Pod Corner. That's a good place to hang out in the meantime while you're waiting for our, the pod to come back. Uh, also, we have a Discord. Go hang out there as well. Both links are in the show notes. Um, but in the corner, someone said, uh, you know, do you have a favourite supermarket and so on? And I went in there and I was like, online shopping only. I, I avoid going into a supermarket at all costs. Problem is, can't get a roti chicken. When I say roti chicken, I mean rotisserie chicken. Right. Uh, they don't the... live. Nah, nah. Because it might be hot, will it? Mm, and raccoons and whatnot will get to it. It's raccoons, <laughs> all the raccoons. <laughs> Huge raccoon problem. <laughs> so um, so I'm starting to think I might have to set, set foot in the brick and mortar a bit more often. You should. As inspired by Erin Simpson's Chicken Hungry Son. <laughs> Erin Simpson's, Simpson's Chicken Hungry Son is a great pub quiz team name. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. If only you lived in Auckland and we could pub quiz together. Oh dear, one day. Uh, Jojo Siwa. Oh yeah. In your, on, the, on the island, your island. My island. I mean, Samuel, this is kind of your scoop. You, you sent this to me um, over the weekend on Slack that um, Jojo Siwa is here. How did you find out? Someone posted in the corner. The actual uh, scooping of the of the spinoff <laughs> is just the real pod corner, and someone on the Herald beat us to it anyway. Um, but yeah, Jojo Siwa is in New Zealand. She's with Colleen Ballinger's sister, who is Miranda Sings, who's like this old, like twenty fourteen. Like I grew up with her YouTuber, who's recently gotten into a lot of controversy for being really inappropriate with her underage fans. Oh. Mm. Um, she even has a Netflix show uh, from back in the day, like one of the first YouTubers to get a Netflix show, and she is cancelled. Right. So, well, so is Alex. Alex Casey's also cancelled um, in cancel? relation to JoJo Siwa. Oh, gosh. Oh, because Eugene 18111201948 had something to say to you. This is why I'm scared to go near the story of JoJo Siwa, even though I'm so excited to find out what she's doing here. In 2018, I wrote a piece, I think it was just like a very inane piece about Jojo Siwa's show who come to Lightbox or something and I wrote an explainer about who Jojo Siwa was and of course you've got to make a few jokes in there. I mean you've got this teen multi-millionaire with extremely tight ponytail who sells lots of bows to children and covers Huge herself bows. in juice in the shower. All this weird stuff. Like I was like, you know, we can make some jokes here. And she did not enjoy the article. Jojo Siwa herself tweeted it out calling me a bully oh. <laughs> and I got so destroyed by the Sea Windators on Twitter for about um, 48 hours and including this one chappy, the aforementioned Eugene, who um, sort of photoshopped a, I, I say photoshopped. No, 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 <laughs> this is not photoshopped. This is done on, I feel like it's actually done on Instagram Yeah, stories using the neon Tool. The drawing tool. The neon so pen. He sort of tried to give me big elephant ears. I mean, this is quite good Nickelodeon style cyberbullying. Like big elephant ears and a big elephant trunk and said, Hi, that's me again, Alex Casey. <laughs> OMG, I have a really long nose and very long ears. I look like an elephant. And then tags in at the spin off TV. My work for the spin off TV report is so much shit. Laughing face, laughing face, laughing face. At Nickelodeon is awesome. <laughs> and it's still like my favourite troll <clears throat> I've ever got. Um, but, you know, I'm not on Twitter anymore. so Can I read the other one it. as well? Oh, yeah, the other one is sort of... Because <laughs> it's also good. <laughs> yes, you can read it. My name is Alex Casey. On the camera, I speak too fast and the people not understand me. My car is ugly and bored me so much. The house is too small for me. I dying every day. My hair, the hairline killing me. And I have no money for a good story. I mean, a lot of that's true. A lot of it's true, Especially it? the hairline killing me. <laughs> And no money for a good story. And I die the Uber I mean, driver. I dying every day. That's, <laughs> that's just the truth. So thank Bold you. of Jojo Siwa fans to be coming after your hairline. <laughs> I know. I also, I, what I love about this particular tirade is that uh, it feels like Chat GPT when it was in its infancy, when yes. it was just like 
they're, they're troubleshooting. They've only just, you know, it's very, very new tech and it's not to be released to the public yet, but Eugene works for ChatGPT and he's just doing a wee test run. It also, actually, probably more accurately, is like when you just hit the middle button of predictive text yeah. to make a funny sentence on, you know, in a Facebook comment. And yet utterly profound and completely um, accurate. So Honestly, iconic image. <laughs> There's so much. We will make this available. It will be up. I mean, it's it'll be. Is it on Twitter still? Do you still have a twit? No, it's gone. No. But we'll put okay, it great. Well, so exclusively, it'll be on our our um, the spinoff podcast network Instagram page. It an elephant's trunks nostrils are not up there <laughs> where he's put them. No, um, it's a really unusually shaped. Tr- is it just so much? And also, how. how he can't even see your ears, so how can he say you've got long ears? I've actually got really tiny ears as well. See, I, don't, I just don't think he's done his research. <laughs> it's just great. I mean, this happened, what year is it? This is five years old and I still think about it, like, at least once a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so good. Um, quite the pivot. Courtney Kardashian, always impeccable, never got a... a Big elephant nose and big elephant ears hanging out. No hairline killing her. Does have a bit of a belly hanging out, though, and I'm not body shaming. But she is pregnant. She's pregnant, and she announced it by way of sign. <laughs> at- <laughs> fan, fan sign at a Blink concert. <laughs> at a Blink concert. And there's been a bit of hubbub as to whether or not, you know, Travis knew or not. Of course he knew. I'm sure he probably did know. It seems like kind of a risk to announce it by sign. <laughs> yeah, nah. Because it's the classic, um, the so-and-so I'm pregnant, which is like a, an, uh, like a trope in, um, in concert signs, right? You know, oh, okay. Say the name of the band member, member and I'm pregnant. Right. And so that was, uh, that was just a way I feel that they chose to announce to the world because she is showing – and I feel like the fact that she's showing probably means she's reasonably farish along mm. and that it's given all the trouble that they've had to get pregnant, that's probably something that they were keeping to themselves for a little bit before going public. I don't know. I, 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 so. I, I feel like his reaction would have been way bigger than it was as well. I didn't actually see what he did. Did he just go, oh. oh. He just sort of got down. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't good acting. He just got down and gave her a kiss. Um Um, And then went back and and resumed the show. This might actually be a spanner in the works now, this pregnancy. I mean, obviously so happy for them. But does this mean, when is Blink coming to New Zealand? Because I was thinking about buying tickets purely because I was thrilled by the idea that Courtney Kardashian might be there. (laughs) Oh. You know? Oh, but now she might not. It could throw the whole tour in jeopardy. I feel like she'd take the baby with. You might get more Kardashian for your buck. True. Um. I'm mortified because she's 44, which is the same age as me. And it just sends chills down my thigh. Thighs! <laughs> spine! Chills down my spine! Down my eyes. That's your Helen Cherry skirt, girl. <laughs> Uh, I'm a woman of the people. It was bought from the Dove Shop. Um, chills down my spine. The idea of having a baby at uh, at this age. I'm sure she can do it. I'm just got no energy for the children I already have. I'm can't sure imagine. having many, many, many millions of one. millions of dollars would help <sighs> the entire experience. But even the pregnancy. But boy, oh boy. Mm. Anyway, good luck to her. Good on it. Good on them. Well done. I mean. Honestly, if anyone was going to get pregnant naturally, it's those two because I'm pretty sure they're only ever having sex. Yeah. Like all the time. It's a bit much on, <laughs> on the lot. show for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look what the next story is. Oh, it's embarrassing. This is exciting. I can't believe we didn't lead with this. Look, I have no shame. I had a colonoscopy yesterday. Um, for anyone who's had a colonoscopy before, the colonoscopy itself, fine. I was out to it. The prep? Horrendous. I'm sure I've spoken about this because I've had them before and so I'm sure I've spoken about this on previous pods. Do you have to drink like uh, you have to drink this and stuff? Lots of laxatives and it gives you it makes you cold and feel like you're gonna vomit and and it's just it's it's a terrible, terrible time and it's weird to like forcibly give yourself bad times in the toilet. Mm. 
But that's what I, this was my Sunday night. And then I had to get up at three in the morning because I had an early appointment and finish the last litre and oh. just keep going. It was shocking. But the worst part of it all, and look, this has been an ongoing issue for me for the last, like, six or seven years. Mm-hmm. My bottom doctor <laughs> is a very handsome man. <laughs> Real life raid. <laughs> <laughs> and it kills me every time I think it's going to be fine. Just be prof- be a professional human, Jane. Just sit there and know it's... And like this time, like yesterday, I had to be there at 7.30 in the morning. So I was like, no makeup. I had lots of like fuzzy little hair bits. I was wearing my comfy clothes um, because, you know, I was having a procedure. And, and then he walked in and I was like, it's cool, it's cool, it's chill. And he's in his scrubs and I'm like, oh, Damn it, you're still wow. like super handsome and it lovely. Be, it shouldn't be allowed. It should you should It should wear not a mask be allowed. Or you know? Why did he decide to go into that line of work? <laughs> you know? Like of all the different doctory disciplines. <laughs> he looks like he should be a plastic surgeon. Oh, not dear. a not a not a roll over, and I'm gonna pop a camera up your bottom. Oh my god! I mean, so truly. are you making are you making small talk? Are you trying to be cool? Like, what's your approach in this? Yeah, well, I tried to be cool by like not dressing up. That was my whole thing. Was like, take me as you find me. It's seven thirty in the morning. I'm an adult. It's not good to think that my doctor's good looking. I'm just going in there for a procedure, and then it, obviously as he walked down the room, I regretted not doing a full like getting just doing a full face and hair and everything. Mm. Um, but it wouldn't have made any difference anyway, because it's not like he's going to look at me and go, <laughs> wow, you're hot. I'll just do this. I'll just do this procedure and then I'll get your phone number, you know? Like, oh, dear. I know, but it, it adds to the tension. It's already, I imagine, quite a difficult situation to be in. <laughs> yeah, we were making, we were making, you know, just in, in your gown, padding along in your bare feet and he's chatting away, but just being good looking. And it's just... Oh, we were talking about tr- tr- Queenstown. Tell about Queenstown. Oh, no. yeah, Queenstown tourism <laughs> is like popping off. I don't know. I don't know. Just anything, like, but just <laughs> anything but the bum. Anything but the bum. Let's just move on. Um, how often do you wash your dressing gown? This is a question that's popped up in the um, in the corner. And I know you're a dressing gown wearer. I love my sort of dressing gown. Teally orangey thing. My, my orange with blue polka dots. I would say probably like once every two weeks. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, interesting. Is that good or bad? No, that's that's good as far as I'm concerned. Is it? I can't recall the last time I washed my dressing gown. Oh. <laughs> I don't think I wear mine as much as you, you wear I wear yours. mine, like, I wear mine when, it, like, when, the, when the sun sets, the, the gown is on, you know? But also, here's a question. Is it always over the top of other things, or do you sometimes... It's always sometimes... on top of other things. So how dirty is it really getting, you know? yeah. That's true. I don't know. I just think because it's so frequent, I um, I often just chuck it in with the towels and stuff. Oh, I think you're in. I think you. I think that's good. I think you're in the top like five percent. Wow. Okay. What do you reckon, Samuel? You're nodding subtly over there. I I don't wash my dressing gown <laughs> to the point where I'll just throw it out once it's done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I will wash mine if it, if I've like done a like a cooking baking session or something and got like a smear. Of mm. batter or something on it that's like can't hide this anymore. There's no hiding from this. I need to wash it. Other than that, if you can't see it, it doesn't exist. You know? Yeah, that's true. No dirt on this. <laughs> <laughs> God, this is just really real news, eh? It really is. Really, really is. I'm just, I'm amazed because I'm not generally like that clean. I think in most respects, <laughs> but that's um something I do. I do do. <laughs> you should be proud of that thing that you do do. <laughs> It's been way too much. I can't believe chat. we're coming up with all these great new taglines right before we go on hiatus. <laughs> well, I've got to s- store them up, everyone, and and just uh, fire them off over the next six weeks as if as if it were an Alex Casey business card. <laughs> Deploy them. Talo for lover. I'm Madeline Chapman, editor at the Spin Off. If you have the means, consider supporting our high-quality journalism by becoming a spin-off member. Sign up now at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. Kia ora, this is Toby Manhire, here to urge you to tune in to Gone by Lunchtime, a podcast with me, Annabelle Lee Mather and Ben Thomas, tackling the world of New Zealand politics, from policy to polling, from scandal to psychodrama. Listen to Gone by Lunchtime, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network, wherever good pods are sold.
Um, we're just going to pop into reality check now. I have four things to decide. I'm going to drop my entire life. I am disgusted at how much you have copied my husband. <laughs> you just bought. Reality check. There's really only one show to talk about, isn't there? Previously. Love I'm loving this season. Do you feel even more attached to Ian Sterling now that you've interviewed him? When you hear his voice come out, are you kind of like, ah, it's my mate? I do, and I feel like I kind of like do polite laughs, even at things I don't find that funny. <laughs> <laughs> like you do with your real mates, eh? Yeah. <laughs> like I'm doing right now. Exactly, like that. It was, that was lovely. I feel <sighs> buoyed by that. Um, but I also, I think I talked about this already, but you kind of like see his tricks. Now that he's sort of, because yes. he talked yep. about, you know, his favourite joke structures and stuff and you see it and you see how he will latch on to something like the fact that Medi works in trains. Yeah. And we'll oh, just it's like the new, run It's the that. new Luca Bish. Totally. You know. The man sells fish. Um, but no, I'm really enjoying the season. I feel like it's already picked up quite a lot in terms of just interpersonal dramas, couples falling in and out, you know. Yeah, I'm um, I'm really liking this this bunch. I I don't think I got very far through last last year's, um, and the year before was the Luca Luca mm. the you know that season with um was elected to or whatever. Yeah, you know that was a great season. Uh, last year I couldn't get into it. This year I'm I'm well in. Um, I'm all caught up. You'll be pleased to know. Terrific. There's no one that I really dislike, which is unusual. Um, but they, they are all a bit lovely. I'm waiting for some what I've coined villa zillas to oh. to rear their heads. They may already be there. They may exist and just yet the show thing. their true colours. They're already there. You know, they're right. just they're just waiting to shed their skin. I think it's interesting how this is not my own observation, but my good friends always that no one's really normally by this point. There's a few kind of ride or die couples, you know, like which you know we might have been led to believe at the start would have been Molly and Mitch, but that's already fallen apart. And not it, according to Mitch, it's not. <laughs> well, Mitch will just have anyone. <laughs> well, Mitch is hitting on anything with a pulse yeah. to try and stay <laughs> safe when it comes to the recap fling, which is extremely funny, like especially when he goes up to Jess and is like, so I've decided um, I am attracted to you. And she's just like, what the fuck it's are you so on about, mate? Like, like, Especially after you did that weird football trick where you <laughs> it was a over. bloody It was a bloody good football trick. It was it was a good bloody football trick. But it's funny that that's like what's turned Mitch's head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But also the way he says it, every, his conversations that he delivers are not, there's no banter. It's very kind of like direct and just, oh, yeah, very funny. Um, but he also was trying to be like, hey, Molly, um, I still am really keen on you, even though I said I never want to talk to you again if you hang out with, um, with what's his name, Zachary, Zachariah. <laughs> Zachariah. Um, so, uh, but I actually am still really keen. But we can do it cloak and dagger so that no one has to know and just lay light. She's like, I don't I don't want to do it at all. Yeah. <laughs> like she's com- he's completely put her off. And it's funny because that's echoed with me because I thought Mitch was a bit of a catch to start with. I thought he was like... Mm my type on paper. Yeah. Um, and he's just giving me the ick the way that he's behaving. He's just he's just a total weirdo. And I think he's coming in with the old Love Island mentality where he's like, you need to be in a couple from the start to be beloved by the public. But now I think they're realising that Casa Amor is this thing that looms so large now in the future and the idea of bombshells is something that's so entrenched that people are just really hedging their bets this season, I think. Yeah, they no really one, are. No one wants to be closed off to anything because who knows who will walk in tomorrow, which I actually <laughs> don't mind. You know, I think it's kind of... I think it's kind of fun when like, there's but it less does loyalty. Also, it does also mean that no one is... Because I feel like there's saying that you're not closed off and then there's actually being not closed off because sometimes... I feel like people are in couples a little bit like um, oh, I've forgotten their names. Andrew, Andrew, and what's face from a couple of years yes, back. Yes, yes. How they were pretty closed off, but they kept saying they weren't. And then there's Casa and more blew things up. Obviously, things went crazy then. But now I feel like this lot are actively trying not to fall for people, not just mm. saying it, but they're actively like trying not to get too close to people for that very reason. Yeah, it's quite odd. It is odd. I also thought it was odd, and this is not being ageist, this is within the universe of the show, that one of the bombshells was 30. That is ancient. (laughs) 
ancient. Are you in a house full of 20 year olds? I mean, such you could a big have difference. You could have told me she was 21 and I'd have this believed it because all of these people look 30 to me and all are apparently 21. Like, it's just, it blows my it's, mind. It's very, I don't confusing. think I could even figure out how to get a passport at that age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let alone know how to, like, it took me 10 plus years to figure out how to curl my hair with my straighteners. Mm. And oh, look at them. The thing is, absolute doing, pros. Oh. Just, just to go and stand out, you know, around a bar <laughs> with the same people you were just with an hour ago is just an outstanding amount of effort. Um, but yeah, I love, I particularly love <laughs> Whitney and Mehdi. Very yes. weird couple. I love Mehdi. He's He was a bit of a nothing for me for a while. He's just flying under the radar. And now I'm just like adore him. Yeah. He seems like the most normal person in the yeah. villa. <laughs> kind of stays out of drama. But Whitney was also instantly likable by yeah. the public and by all the castmates. This is true. Um, and I miss George, levitating oh, George. Sweet George. Um, and Ruchi, who who I was basically in tears when she left, and now I'm like, who? You know, <laughs> those, especially those kind of the OG cast members who come in, and when they first leave, you're like, I'll never forget you. I'll never forget. And we've still got, like, six weeks to go. It's so long to go. We're only just getting started. It's very oh. exciting. Just, uh, just buckle in for free for everyone on TVNZ+. Plus. What, what else have you been watching? I've just actually last night finished binging. Well, there's only three episodes up now, but um, three have got this new kind of comedy hour on Thursday nights where it's a back-to-back feature of Double Parked, um, written by Chris Parker and Alice Sneddon and starring Madeline Sami and Antonia Preble, a lesbian couple who, through kind of a botched, series of botched situations, both end up pregnant. And then after that is Homebound 3.0, um, which is... I think written and created by um, Sam Wang, who's also the star of the show, and our own Michelle Ang, former we, spin-off so when we accountant. Say our own, we mean our own. From our own company. And she yep. is so extraordinary in this show. And it's just, it's such a good show. It's like a very good rom-com kind of premise about two people who don't really want to be together, but because of convenience and the pressure from their families are sort of faking it. And, of course... They're going to end up. Oh, don't ruin it. I'm only <laughs> third of the way through episode one. I well, look, you can it. see what's going to happen, surely. I just, I, Michelle's not even been on the screen yet. Oh, my goodness. I've, I've, um, I had to start watching after I just watched a little bit of it this morning after reading your recommendation, and I'm already obsessed with it. It's, it's really good, it, eh? It doesn't take long to, to hook you in. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's like a bombshell. Bombshell in the villa. Have you got anything out? Have you been watching anything, Jane? Nah. <laughs> no, just Love Island. Just Love Island. Um, that's it, really. In, in a and way, that's knitting, all you need. Have a little you? Why do I have to make Warren a beanie? Warren? Warren the warthog. He's a squishmallow. He's only about yay big. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I, my son was out playing soccer in the yard, and I thought it would be cute if I put a, his beanie on his little toy to watch him play, right? I was Aww. like, Warren, wa- Warren wants to watch you watch. And he goes, oh, Warren's cute in a beanie, but that one's too big. Can you knit me another one that fits him, Mum? So I, I stitched myself up. Wow. Yeah, so I'm, I'm currently knitting a tiny, tiny, tiny little beanie. Or a squish mallow. Warthog. Warthog. I feel bad because, oh, my God, there's a whole saga, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Settling. He loves this fucking thing so, so much. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever touched a Squishmallow, but they're velvety smooth. Mm. They're really, really nice. And um, one morning, uh, my other son, who constantly trolls his little brother, um, threw Warren. He was supposed to hit me, but he landed in the sink and got dirty, <gasps> right? I thought I'd cleaned it off, but then Jude came home from school, found some muck on Warren's bum. and uh, <laughs> Not again. I'm not, I'm not again. <laughs> Um, and so I gave him a bit of a wash and then he was upset that Warren was wet and I was like, don't worry, I'll dry him. And I got the hairdryer on him, but it got <gasps> flew a little close to the sun. Oh no. And I melted some of Warren's fur. <gasps> and then I rang Joel and was like, are you out? Can you get another Warren? Like <laughs> the old, the old goldfish, you know, we'll replace the hamster. He'll never know. And then I felt so bad about it. I was like, I have to tell him because I feel like he'll know that's not his Warren. So... So then I, I told him about Warren. He was devastated. He looked, he was touching, he was in absolute puddles of tears. <laughs> and then I was like, don't worry, Dad's going to get you another Warren. He's like, it won't be the same. Oh, no. 
and then he and then he was I was like look if I I don't know if something really bad happened to me and I lost an arm tragically or something like that you would still love me wouldn't you and he was like yes and I was like well can we feel that way about Warren perhaps it's like yeah yeah okay yeah I love him no matter what but oh. I want another squish my life, so now he's got another one. <laughs> Leverage. It's a um, it's a ginseng. It's not a warthog. Wow. Don't ask. I don't know how they come up with these things. But anyway, all that to say, feeling kind of guilty about the Warren situation. So when he asked me to knit him a beanie, <laughs> ordinarily I probably would have said, no, that's too much work. But instead I said, yes, of course, anything for this scarred creature that I ruined. That is the such a beautiful story. End. The devotion of this mother. <laughs> guilt. It's just guilt. Being a mother... <laughs> It's just guilt. It's the next size in guilt for the rest of your days. We need to get a photo of Warren with his beanie on once you've completed it. This is I don't think it will take too long because it's very small. Hugely important. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you I'll get your photo. Oh, dear. Gosh, I'm going to miss okay. this stuff. I'm going to miss yeah. all these chats that I we mean, have. I mean, we can still be friends, we can't can we? Can we? Yeah. We just need to find time to talk outside of yeah. recording it. <laughs> well, we will be talking because we're doing a lot of planning for the new exciting adventure that the Real Pod's going on. Yes. Six weeks of intensive strategy. Training. Training. And strategy. <laughs> <laughs> like tracked, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I mean, I don't know what else to say without just like blabbering on, going on a big old chat uh, without actually telling you what's coming. But what's coming is great. You're going to love it. Please don't. Don't stop thinking of us. Mm. Please don't unfollow us or anything thinking that it's all over. It's not. It's going to be back bigger, better than ever, and you guys are going to love it. So sorry that we're throwing this on you very last minute, but um, it's all going to be worth it, eh, Alex? It's going to be so good. Oh, p- put August in your calendars. Put it there. If it's not there already, <laughs> put August in your calendars because it's a very important – you're going to get completely out of whack if you don't have August in there. I'm touching True. For a start. Make sure it's – yeah. Like for the rest of your days, you're going to be all off. My filter. birthday month as well. Exactly, but um, but also because that's when we're returning, bigger, better, shinier than ever. And that's Can't promise. wait. We'll see you. We'll see you then. See you then. Letters on the Minji. Kia ora, I'm Alex Casey, senior writer at the Spin Off. We wouldn't exist without the ongoing support of our generous members. If you're able to, you can make a donation at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. Kia ora e te iwi, te Ahe Butler here, podcast manager at The Spinoff. If you enjoy listening to our podcasts, consider supporting our mahi by signing up to become a Spinoff member at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. The Spinoff Podcast Network.